This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Hey guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 683. Tuesdays we've been talking professionalized wrestling. Back on a Tuesday after a little bit of uh, scheduling shenanigans because of one reason or another. We were back. We're not on the beach. We're in the studio, Sorgatron Media in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And we are here ready to talk about wrestling. Um, Mad Mike is not with us. He is off on assignment. Not our assignment. Another wrestling assignment from somebody else uh so wishing him the best of luck with that and uh but we got we got a crew in studio with you and we got all the gold first of all of course ronnie starks is with us howdy and he brought hashtag ronnie two belts with him I got uh, this one freshly painted freshly Looks painted the, the triple crown championship and, and then, I got the, and then uh, we have the returning jay cooper comedian extraordinaire what's going on everybody i didn't ask you what to what to call you going into this but no uh, that sounds good we had a, we had a whole list from from our last comedian guest last show, so oh, okay. <laughs> I had to check. Uh, but uh, how you doing? I, I see that you are uh, uh, at least uh, borrowing the uh, Black Diamond Festival Championship. Well, you know what? Before we went live, I already pinned him for the championship. It's so true. he is the new champion. You said it was yeah. like a twenty four seven championship. Yeah. yeah, is this the the Sorgatron Media, the Beach View Festival, the podcast festival? Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. I'll yeah. win it back when the show is over. It's okay, no yeah. problem. No well, problem. We can try. I can try. <laughs> yeah. How you doing, Jay? It's been forever. I know it's been a minute, man. Got a lot of catching up to do. We do, we do, and uh, of course, you guys catch up with us too. We're on the Facebook Live here uh, tonight. A lot of you guys in the chat room. Thank you so much for people joining us from all across the country. I see you guys hanging out there uh, from the West Coast, from the Middle Coast, and everywhere in between. Uh, of course, you can check out if it's your first time everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, where you can find links and subscribe to us uh, in uh, non WWE violating form over at uh, <laughs> in podcast and video forms or look us up on your favorite platform you can ask your google home your amazon echo or whatever other voice device to listen to the wrestling mayhem show podcast it's kind of cool and futuristic to be able to do it that way uh if you have those devices around and they come in cracker jack box na- boxes now so of course you guys probably have them out there and of course you can hit us up at that email address Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. He has been assimilated, ladies and gentlemen. It's fantastic. Uh, despite his his uh, performance report is uh, pending later in the show <laughs> from you guys, the Patreon supporters. We'll talk about that later. Also, you can hit us up at 412-206-WMS0. Please, please uh, put that in your phone and uh, say, uh, dial this when drunk. Or dial this when drunk at wrestling show and uh, make sure that's at the top of your favorites. Uh, and also tweet us at Mayhem Show and the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page and the Facebook group where a lot of great discussion and memes and and um, what would your superstar name be in NXT memes or whatever uh, pop up over there. Uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, great discussion happening through the week that you guys are sharing. Also, we are here live every Tuesday now for a long, for a while now. I'm pretty sure. I'm, I swear, guys. We're. I'm, I think for the next two months straight, we'll be every Tuesday. Oh, yes, at 9 p.m. Eastern time on Facebook Live. And if you're catching us later on one of the other streaming outlets, we're in a few different places. Uh, you can and have some comments or just want to tell us what we got wrong on this episode. It's up at Mayhem Show on the Twitter with hashtag WMS six eight three. Uh, thank you to our. Oh, also thank uh, ca- uh, the shout out to our stream partner, the 405 media.com. It's carrying us over there. Check your listings on there for that information. Thank you everybody supporting us at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show, including our fan of the show. $1 level. Bo diggity. Ed Burke, Bobby F J town, Tina keys and team Hamifist at the pocky club. $5 level is Bradley brothers, doc remedy, Dave Potter, Kyle Turner, yeah, Kyle Turner, damn it. Daniel Towery. I need more coffee. Just and at the Pizza Club, ten dollar level, 
Ryan Clark at $13. And the manager, $20 level, tells Ronnie everything to do is our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling. <laughs> Sorry, I need to catch up with myself. Uh, you guys can support the sh- show, too. Thank you so much. It really means a lot that you guys do uh, contribute to the Patreon. I hope you've been enjoying the stuff we've been uh, doing. Uh, last week, we did, um, if you're if you're on there, oh, no, bringing me a pot of coffee right now is you producer just Missy. Drink, no, drink oh, my out God. of the coffee just cup. Drink, but, okay, we just, no, it's too hot. <laughs> so, while well, Missy pours that, um, uh, Ronnie watched the Pasta Death Match 2. Fans bring the pasta weapons from nice. Prospect Pro Wrestling. Uh, you can watch that watch along, and, and we actually include the match in a little uh, box there, so you can actually watch the match along with uh, Ronnie's reactions to it. Um, which, spoiler alert, it is his favorite match of all time <laughs> between Mambo Italiano and Chess Flexor. Um, so that is part of the Patreon uh, over there for the Pocky Club level on Matri- Patreon After Dark. I'm sorry, Mayhem Show After Dark. Uh, so, um, and I'm supposed to surprise him today. <laughs> so I haven't thought about that. If anybody wants to DM me any, um, um, a matches, uh, in our, uh, indie wrestling that us catalog, uh, or the network that you want him to watch, let me know, especially crazy shit. Yes. Anything yes. crazy. Anything crazy. I am very open-minded to anything ridiculous. <laughs> That sounds like a good plan. Uh, so go check that out. Again, and you guys can support the show, communicate with us, and give a performance report to uh, uh, podcast newbie Ronnie Starks over at <laughs> patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Let it, us talk wrestling. Jay. Yes. We were just talking about a little bit before the show. What has got you excited? Catching up with you. There is so much going on. Way too much going like, on. It's, it's like there's there's not any of the big, big, big news this week, but there's a lot of just stuff going on. Wrestling is proceeding. Um, like what what is kind of getting your attention these days? What's getting my attention is that AEW is getting WWE's attention. Now, I know that WWE likes to talk about how they're not scared, they're not concerned, they're not worried about them, but come on now. Putting a, a NXT live on the USA Network to combat with AEW before they even debut. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's crazy right off the bat. I mean, they needed to be on TV anyway. Mm-hmm. They needed to be on TV anyway. But WWE, I think they got too many shows, though. It's too much for me to try and grasp onto. You got yeah, 205 yeah. Live. You got NXT UK, which is the probably, besides NXT, the best show that they got going on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those so- guys are killing it. Because SmackDown and Raw, hit and miss. yeah. You know what I mean? Hidden more than they had been in the past. I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. They, they made they made up for the last pay per view. Um, um, what is what is it now? Is it Clash of Champions or is it Night of Champions? It was like, Clash of Champions. Yeah. Okay. We're, like, we're going with the old did, WCW name now. Okay. So so it was at one time. It was called Night of Champions at mm-hmm, one time, yeah. right? Okay. That's what I was because you know what Seth Rollins he messed that up. On Monday, did you notice that? Did he? Yeah, when he was talking to Braun Strowman in the ring, he was saying night, and then he stumbled and he said Clash Champions, and yeah, so it wasn't just it wasn't just me. I'm glad then. we're not the only. He I, stumbled on it too. I, I kept accidentally <laughs> calling it Night of Legends for several years when it happened. And I was so glad when they changed it. Yeah, because there was the old IWC Night of Legends shows in like the late 2000s, right? Yeah. Um, so that was my issue, but uh, no, it was. Uh, yeah, they they changed that up, and it's kind of cool, although. And it's cool that they do dedicate a night to like, hey, every champion is going to be here because it feels like so many get lost in the shuffle, right? Yeah, they do. Here's a here's a suggestion though for the WWE if you're watching, and I know you are because I, this I is know like, somebody from the WWE has to be watching. Okay, so let, has let me, to be watching. So let me just put this out here: you have a lot of great talent mm-hmm. on the WWE 205 roster, right. 205 Live roster. Stop putting them on the damn pre-show. Give them now. Give them at least the opening match of the pay per view. So, so there's a strategy here, and Man Mike gets really pissed when I bring this up too because I'm what? thinking this wrestling like TV strategy. Remember the pre-show now, two hundred five live. Oh my fault! They don't even call it pre-show. No, it's we, kickoff. We, we got to call it the show. kickoff. It's a kickoff. Yeah, it's we don't call show. it. They don't call it. Pre-show. But it's the freebie. Sometimes yes. it's on USA <laughs> Network. So it's on all the media platforms, right? Mm-hmm. Two hundred five live is not is nowhere. Except for WWE Network. Hulu, I know. But you have to pay to watch, right? Yeah. So why would you put the thing that you have to pay to watch on the show that you have to pay to watch when you can feature 205 Live on the free show 
that makes you want to stick with the network to check out the rest of the 205 live content. That's one way to look at it. That is one way to look at it, because I, I think these old wrestling pay-per-views, the first match is the is the shits match, you know, in comparison to the main event. Right. You know, I mean, that with the number of belts, with the number of storylines that don't involve belts and just involve somebody like fucking Ronda Rousey or something, right? Yeah. Um, I think we've kind of diluted that, you know, top-to-bottom card order kind of idea. Like, we're still doing that on, like, we still see that on like indie shows and stuff and other shows, but in WWE with as many high points, yeah, you know, or at least plot points. Like, and, there's, and I get that, but yeah. I'm like, okay, like if, if it was like a six man tag with, um, I don't know, Lucha House Party against whoever, then yeah, put that in there. But this is a cha- every cruiserweight championship match has always mm-hmm. been on the kickoff. Yeah, every one of them. Yep. Even at WrestleMania, mm-hmm. it was a kickoff. Mm-hmm. And it was one of the best matches of the night. Mm-hmm. I, I don't get it. It's to get you excited for the show and, and like, hey, let's watch more for this. But you got to pay to watch more of this. But that's not fair to them, though, because now these guys are performing in front of people. They're still trying to get mm-hmm. in and sit mm-hmm. down. Mm-hmm. They're still but, they're performing in but front of a half If you were on the WrestleMania house. pre-show, you were on USA Network. Mm-hmm. And you are on more eyeballs than you ever were on 205 Live on the network. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's one way to look at it. Mm-hmm. That's one way mm-hmm. to look at it. Right? I get yeah. that. No, they're they're still getting paid the big bucks to do it. Yeah. They're still, yeah. They're still on the main show. It's just, you know, yeah, the fans are fouling in, but you have to keep in mind that you know, I've been to WrestleMania about five times now. So, really... Five fit, times? Yeah. Jeez, man. Yeah. Five times. Five and I've times. only... Uh, five times. <laughs> right? That, I, that's <laughs> not <laughs> what I was... Yeah. I made it to one. It was practically by accident. Yeah, I went to one. I went. I went to that. I went to the one at um, what was it? Um, MetLife Stadium. MetLife, the first one at MetLife. Oh yeah, God, yeah, MetLife. yeah, that was a good time. Yeah, yeah. It, it was ra- not it, a good time for me. It rained and snowed. Yeah, it was yeah. cold. That was cold. That it sucked. was cold that night. That sucked. Yeah. I will never do an outside WrestleMania again unless it's someplace warm. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere a little uh, uh, say south of the Mason Dixon at least, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's get a little you, you closer. You had me at uh, warm, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Gonna, I'm it's looking forward. Like Florida. I'm yeah. looking forward because I think I'm also accidentally going to be in LA the week of WrestleMania next year or in two years or wherever that might be. So it's like, ooh, guess what I'm doing in the evening? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> if this works out the way it has been the last few years. I'm, but I'm anyways, trying, you were saying I'm trying to get you to accidentally show up in uh, in California in July. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously. But um, yeah, it's you're on the main show. You're still getting paid. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you're on the USA Network. All eyes are still on you. Even filing in at WrestleMania has more people than an arena. Yeah, yeah. So people are paying attention because they're like, it's WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. But Let's at the get same, watch this. But at the same time, I'm reading rumors where they're talking about that there's a chance that Tool Five Live. So I, uh, Brandon in the in Kansas City actually sent me an article today. Okay. Uh, now again, sources I don't know. Uh, into the article uh, that was talking about how, well, actually, no, 205 Live is just going to move with Friday Night SmackDown. But we are including more cruiserweights from 205 Live in NXT. But also notice... I like that. Also notice, we've seen this last week with USA and the um, the, the second half of NXT on the network and, and leading up to this. We are seeing more crossover with NXT UK. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right? Yes. So and again, I think that's going to be more of a oh, who are these guys? Oh, there's these guys over here in the NXT UK. Go watch more of them by picking up the network. So it's still like whereas we used to be like build, build, build to the pay per view for you to buy. Mm-hmm. Now it's build, build, build to see more of the story on the paid network. Mm-hmm. Two hundred five live NXT, you know, etc. Yeah. You know, um, I feel like and I feel like in recent months, like a couple months ago, they even had like cruiserweight feature matches just hey here's a six-man tag from 205 live hey remember they're over on the network and they're gonna do some crazy stuff right mm-hmm. uh like and i think that makes sense you know re- you know remember the shows on usa are to drive you to the paid thing yeah right, right. you know and at most nxt um drove you to continue watching nxt and then to the takeovers eventually okay which you already got because you're a network but we want right. to sell the room out Right. Or the advertising, or whatever the case may be, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it's just the models are different than they used to be. Yeah. Well, they definitely have gotten better. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They definitely gotten better, and um, kudos to them adding additional people to the roster. Mm-hmm. Um, Mike Canellis, I think, was a great addition to 205 Live. Um, and now Raw. 
with, his, now with wrong, his wife. Which, yeah, that, I mean, that, that's woo, line man, yeah. I have never seen a role like that. I mean, it's, it's starting to turn into Jerry Springer-ish almost again. Uh, you would have totally. Well, actually, I think it's they are. You, aren't you, they having Maury Povich on next week oh, over really? that? I are you kidding me? Confirmed. For real? Yeah. that's what. That was, so we're going to get the oh, You Are Not God. the Father routine? I believe so. Oh, I'm totally in. <laughs> I mean, we've had Jerry Springer on the show. We've yeah. done that whole thing. Like Dude, we not he's never been on wrestling ever. Mm-mm. Paul Heyman's killing it. I don't care what anybody mm-hmm. says. Paul Heyman's mm-hmm. doing a great job. It's getting he's them, doing a great job. I, I, they're they're bringing back the vibe for better or for worse, and hopefully not as much of the worse, where they're pushing limits and they're doing. things things that make you want to talk about it oh right. what's up with this fiend oh what's braun Strowman going to do when they blew up the set that one that one week right mm. um you know it, it there's a lot of did you see what happened yeah you know that like legit beautiful. like i was not paying attention doing something else had it on the side and i'm like what the fuck is happening on raw tonight yeah you know when they did the set with him and bobby lashley mm. and i was just like man like this is like I know it just doesn't seem like because you're still slogging through three hours, mm-hmm. but there's still a moment of like, what's going to happen next with this mm-hmm. uh, kind of situation? And and they're bringing that back slowly but surely. Yeah, because they said that one of the biggest issues was that um, as far as viewership, it dropped in the third hour, mm-hmm. which I got to be honest with you. I mean, three hours of wrestling, it's kind of hard to keep my attention for three hours. It's too much. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot yeah. to take. Um, they're doing good getting my attention the first half an hour of it there of course they still got to do the in-ring segment to build up to the main event which i wish they would just go right into a match mm-hmm. you know just go right into a match like how they like how ring of honor does it like how new japan does it like like impact wrestling does it they just go right into a match mm-hmm. it's like as soon as raw start you know Seth Rollins is going to come out. It's a format. You know that yeah. Roman Reigns is going to come out. And it, I mean, it's too predictable. Also, like, no other show has been around as long as Raw and SmackDown. No. Right. So there's a format, and they're on top. Therefore, well, we just go with the format. I was like, all right, who gets in that first segment where we talk for 10 minutes? Okay. 10 talk minutes? About this and da, 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 da. Shoot. I, I know. It's like it's uh, there, more like a half an hour. Yeah, yeah. there's yeah, been yeah. moments where you get 40-minute promos where you get a match. Hey, yeah. there's only one person who I know that can kill 40 minutes and I wouldn't get bored, and that's The Rock. Mm-hmm. Now, The Rock can talk trash in the back, lead all the way to him coming out, getting in the ring. He can talk trash for half an hour, and I wouldn't be bored. <laughs> He's the only one. Maybe Stone Cold, but I don't think Stone Cold could do well, a half an hour. I, I think Stone Cold could probably do a good solid 10 because, you know, I couldn't listen to what, what, what for a half an hour. I couldn't, mm. I couldn't listen to that. that so, just... so, so beyond that, <laughs> also, um, and of course, we're pulling out all the stops because we're leading into the season premieres and we need to justify yes. everything we just got paid yes. to move the Fox um, and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and also, we're talking about how Raw's doing. Um, I'm getting updates about SmackDown tonight. A lot of time is being dedicated to Shane's lawyers tonight. Um, so yeah. I was thinking about that because I watched SmackDown like Monday morning, and um, and I was just like, okay, Shane. I mean, obviously Shane is Vince, and KO is is Stone, Stone Cold, Cold, right? Yeah. Uh, which, uh, why would it be any other way? Uh, Kevin Owens became popular as Kevin Steen doing basically the stone cold thing mm-hmm. fucking with Ni- nigel mcginnis as the authority figure in ring of honor ring of, yeah, and it was him like, and, and, J- and jim Cornette. yeah and yeah he was the authority figure yeah right so i mean that's when he's the hottest that's when he shines mm-hmm. it does feel like on on both shows it feels like hey what got you to the dance hey let's do that yeah hey bullet club oc you know that got you here Mm-hmm. Why don't we go back to what got you here that got right. people excited instead of reinventing the wheel in our own image? Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Uh, which has always been a WWE problem. Right. Yeah. They got to make it their own. They got to mold it their own. Um, sometimes it works. Sometimes it don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like miss. Yeah. Yeah. So just like a new OC theme song. I'm. Oh, God. <laughs> that theme song is terrible. <laughs> It'll grow on me. <laughs> It'll grow on me eventually, oh, but we'll right now I'm, I'm not. Right now, like when I heard it, I'm like, man, why can't y'all just All come right. out? Chris, to AJ? Chris says to quiet down. Mandy is on. <laughs> <laughs> Who is on? Mandy. The hell is that? Uh, you know, Mandy. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, such yeah. a gorgeous woman, but she still has a lot of work to do. 
<laughs> oh jeez. Uh, well, yeah, but I mean, she's got she's got a good team. It's interesting, and she's got Corey going nuts about her. So I mean, I mean, it could be different. You could have uh, Lacey Evans getting pulled over and having a conniption. Oh God, did you see when she stayed in character? There was a video where. Um, she recorded her getting pulled over by I think it was Canadian police, yes. <laughs> and they gave her and they gave her a ticket for speeding. And then or she's something. like, you know, who and I she am? stayed I'm in Lacey character. Evans. She was like, you do you know who I am? No, ma'am, I don't know who you are. I am Lacey Evans, WWE superstar. You should know who I am. He's like, he's like, I don't know who you are. She's like, you know what? Canada sucks. Yeah. And then she just went on this rampage. I was like, Dang. called him a nasty and everything. <laughs> I, just, I said, wow, she really stayed in character oh for this. God. That's awesome. I love I, it. I like. I, I hope it's kind of real, but I feel like because it's like the time uh, one of the cops tried to pull over our truth and try to pin him for the championship. Oh, God. <laughs> did you guys see that a couple weeks no. ago? I did yeah. see that. That's yeah. Really the best. It was one. like the Atlanta police or something. Like, 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 like Georgia police or something, wasn't it? That's yeah, really yeah, yeah, it was. I think the best one I saw so far, I think it was last. Was it this past Monday? When they were in Tennessee, right? And came or Mayor Glenn Jacobs was there. <laughs> and. And he beat our truth mm-hmm. for the tw- yeah for the twenty four seven championship, and then lost it later in the evening. And I thought that was beautiful. I mean, for him to win the championship as mayor, and then Kane comes out, and like then Kane, Kane comes, comes out, out and then too. gets yeah. Like I love that he like does not acknowledge himself as anybody but Glenn. Yeah, for the entire time. Yet still, when he pinned him, he yelled, "I still got it." Yeah. <laughs> So I, that was a nice nod. And That's I, nice that that Tennessee and, and just you know Knoxville County is like fine with that. Yeah. You know, letting him do well, that. I mean, but, but that's hold bringing... on, roll, roll back. Do you remember? Do you remember his campaign fundraising campaign parties that he had, where his good buddy Daniel Bryan or the Undertaker or Big Show would come to do signings at his campaign fundraisers? Yeah, I'm like he like. I'm sure his platform was great too. Um, libertarian, I believe. I, I don't. He's still, but I know he was for a while with his radio show and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, they know what the deal is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know? it's a perfect place to do it. I mean, Tennessee is like a big wrestling. Oh yeah, melting pot down there. I mean, hey, and he got that. J- and Jerry Lawler was almost the mayor of Memphis. Yeah, almost. Nice. Uh, probably 20 years ago, I think he tried. So. Uh, you know, it, it, I mean, this is this is you know everything from Jesse Ventura uh, on, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the, the, was it Rick Steiner, somebody else. Oh, Nikolai Volkov was like some kind of city council guy or something. Which cracks me up. <laughs> did, did he go by the name Nikolai Volkov? No, no, no. It was his. Yeah, it was his real name. Oh, or whatever, okay. right? that so, would like, down really in, funny. And I think it was, it was in like Florida or Georgia or something. Did you hear uh, Muhammad Hassan is a school principal now? No, I swear to God, dude. No, you can look that up. Yeah, That's he's a school awesome. principal. Jeez, that is awesome. That is crazy. I hope his students find out out here. <laughs> I would mess with him so bad. It, it yeah. is, and it is hilarious because I believe he's Italian, actually. Yeah, he, he is, is so. Italian, <laughs> full blooded. <laughs> Play Mohammed Hassan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They were uh, talking about um, Booker T talking about that he's running for um, mayor of Houston. I think I heard yes. mayor. I think that's what he's. I thought he was running for something, but mayor of man, Houston? I don't know about mayor. I gotta kind of look that up now. Yeah, now I'm interested. That would be yeah. interesting if he. He's could um, get I, that. and he's kind of the perfect guy because there's a lot. You know, somebody local. Let's get into other stuff, but somebody locally. You know, people that have like you know, he's somebody that went to jail, right? Has a has a past. It came up out of it. It's a great story. Mm. You know, um, you know, somebody locally had, uh, uh, we've actually had in here on another podcast with Pittsburgh Current, you know, had drug issues, was an addict, recovering addict. And, and she's on, did she get council or maybe state rep or something like that locally? Um, I can't recall, but like, that's like that, you know, ap- apart from being freaking Booker T, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, like that is like, a good platform now. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, Hey, you know, I got an opinion on a, fr- a prison reform because I was there. Right. You know, and I made some shit out of it. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and let's make sure more, some more people can make some shit out of it. Uh, so that's my platform. And this is my Ted talk. <laughs> it's been going around a lot. <laughs> so and let's, let's not forget to mention that Booker T is my favorite promo of all time. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. Well, a couple weeks ago, he popped up with the street profits. 
Did and really? was doing the King Booker King thing. Booker! King Booker! I love Booker. the King Booker. I feel too. like every time he comes out, he's just like, he's the old King Booker, but like turned up like three more notches. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> King Booker is one of the best characters I have ever seen him do. Mm-hmm. Better than G.I. Bro. Well, come on. <laughs> okay, well, there, I mean, come on. G. I. there were two Bro. versions. There was the one before he went into the WCW. Yes. And then the one when he was in like, WCW when he joined. What was he? With the uh, Mis- Misfits the in Misfits. Action, MIA. Yeah, with that was the, terrible. General Erection. General <laughs> General Erection. General Erection. And then we have... Uh, with Lieutenant Loco and... Uh, which I think and, it was Chavo? And, yeah, yeah. And, and Colonel Cajun, who La- I think was Lash La- LaRue. LaRue and, yeah. Yeah, um, that was terrible. Yeah, was, I wasn't watching WCW then. <laughs> it's fun to go back. It's a, it's seriously a lot of fun to yeah, go I'm, back to 99, 2000 on the network. I love I'm going to go on awesome. WWE Network and do that one day. Just go back to WCW. Because I stopped watching after like 98, 99. So 2000, 2001, mm-hmm. I wasn't watching at all. Because WWE yeah. was blowing up. Yeah, yeah. It was so, just like, why am I even bothering anymore? I've been burned too many times. Right? Yeah. yeah. you know. Yeah. But even to go back, because I do remember that era of like, you know, Russo and Bischoff, like, you know, came in, stripped all the belts. Here's the new blood. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. You know, I rewatched that episode a few months ago and be like, wow. Yeah, there was like, I remember like the feeling of hope at this point. Like, this is going to be a thing. I got the the World of Wrestling magazine, you know, the big shiny, you know, yeah. imb- you know, foil and bross cover you know what that was, they had talking about how big of a deal this was going to be. What was that stuff that what was that music that Russo came out to? Oh, he came bad. out to a knockoff no, no, no. of somebody's song. I, I can't remember T- what it was. Yeah, you're thinking T- of Bischoff. Was nah, it, was I'm it thinking TNT? Russo. Was it a TNT? It was rip-off? TNT, yeah. Yeah. Oh, WCW was good about those ripoff songs. That's why yeah. you don't get them a lot when they come right. over WWE like, Network. Like they did just enough to not get like, sued. Why Jerry- like they, like yeah. they pretty much kept the beat, but then they tweaked it somehow. Like why, is, like, why is Jericho coming out to break the walls down when he's Lionheart in 1997? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> my God. I'm so like, sick like of that. Like, we didn't even try. Dude, ugh. It hurts his, me. His theme music in WCW was my favorite. Yeah, because uh, Even Flow was that what it was? Or no, what the was fuck? he an Even Flow ripoff? Oh, I think it was. Jeez, Even there's a YouTube video. Wait, which, which Jericho this. music are we talking about? Are we talking about we're talking when about when he was when he was a when he was babyface, or are we talking about when he was a heel? When he was a heel with Rufus. That yeah, that was Even Flow. Yeah, yeah, they really were the line with that. But also, the, uh, Turner may have also owned a record label, too. So they got away with it. Yeah, they, <laughs> There's something. They were good. Mega Legal was all right with it. And then WWE Legal was like, yeah, maybe not. Maybe and, we won't, like, you know, go one beat off from uh, uh, Nirvana for DDP. Right. You know? Well, speaking of theme music, I just read something, and, and apparently they've been they've been gone for a while. Um, the comp- Those guys that was known for making the theme music for WWE over the last seven years or so. Uh, C Money FO. Yeah, I yeah. heard that they're no longer with the WWE now. And the OC is the the OC theme is the first example of how screwed and they are. That, that's the first thing I, I think, thought about because I'm Tra- like CFO would not yeah. have made that for them. Yeah. Um, so who is doing the music now? Well, Jim Johnston, I think, retired, didn't he? Yeah, he did the music for last. Well, how like, many times 30, can you redo um, Ultimate Warriors music? <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i mean they, or they need somebody music. can we just get like what what superstar producer i mean you know wwe is big enough why can't we just be like hey you know what slipknot's just gonna do music for nxt now you know or oh, that or, would be awesome you know i mean hell it seemed like it seemed like saliva did everybody's theme music for the longest time yeah. uh so right or alter bridge or something like that and we get that from time to time sure but i think, I think less so these days but um, th- yeah, who is your next that person, right? Yeah, like WWE has the money to do it, and mm-hmm. and, and they go with these guys, and, and CFO did such a great job. Can we just chop? Like, can Rick Rubin just start doing WWE music at this point? Are we at that point? You know, right? He's I, friends with them, right? Like, yeah, that, I've seen him. You know, yeah, he's friends with Triple H and Stephanie mm-hmm. and everything. Who's yeah, the just... big? Who is the biggest wrestling fan that is a producer? Other than him? Other than. What are you thinking? Wait a minute. You, wait, by a producer? What, what do you mean by producer? Music producer. Music producer. Music producer. Okay. I can get in the studio and pump out music for people. Like, who is who is the biggest WWE fan? I don't know the answer to this. But that is huh. the person that he's approached with a, pay, with a check <laughs> and just to move forward at this point. Because <laughs> then we get, then, then that's another, like, that's another, um, 
you know, check mark of, of how awesome mm-hmm. WWE is that you can throw in those those social media. Hey, we're better than the NBA things that we get at the com- commercial breaks. That's a good question. I'm really mm-hmm. thinking right now as far as music producers. I'm that would just really... hire somebody from Full Sail. Uh, oh, guys, Jesus. We're to talk some more wrestling. But in the meantime, I'm going to show you a place where you can get other wrestling, varied wrestling, pasta deathmatch wrestling over at IndieWrestling.network. A lot of stuff going on over there. We just posted this week some flashback stuff uh because uh, none of our network partners were having shows this weekend so uh if you go over there you can check out a, a lot of best of stuff hey we go you know, the viking raiders have been having um a oh, lot of uh, a lot of stuff this uh lately you can go check out before the raid with ray Rowe, now known as eric with a k uh volume one and two with him you can check out the best of shima zion now known as walking wild formerly known as djz also on the network also uh we have uh the women of prime involving uh jessica havoc veda scott and so many more johnny gargano prime cuts uh new episodes or newer episodes new releases to digital uh network of uh premier championship wrestling have been on there rise wrestling i think you see ronnie starks over there on that and black diamond wrestling and that crazy 2pw show that involved casket matches blindfold matches i almost got I almost got decked by a blind Italian. Uh, <laughs> so it, a lot of fun stuff over there. That's why I should have you watch the blindfold match. Yes. That's what should happen. Yeah, I, I think that's going to be our goal for this week yeah, is you watching the blindfold match. And Jay, please, if you want to stick around for another 10 minutes I'll, after the show, I'll, I'll stick around, that, yeah. watch some wrestling with us, commentate on us, and we'll, uh, we'll have some fun with that for our friends on Patreon. But go check it out. Uh, Indie Wrestling dot network for that it's five ninety nine a month, but you can go check it out for seven days free. Over got to update that number. Over two hundred hours of content, new and classic content. Much of it in ten eighty HD. Some of it the only place where you can get ten eighty HD. And of course, it works on your TV. It works on uh, through your streaming devices on your phone everywhere that you want to watch your wrestling go check it out indie wrestling dot network exclusive content there as well you get some more of that stuff scheduled too uh <laughs> so while we're thinking about that we need some more hardcore memories with duke and doe we need some more uh okay i'll hit those guys up and we have at least two other round tables that we have been talking about that we need to get scheduled too so a lot of new content in the works there and i think there's Three shows we're shooting this weekend that'll be coming up on the network. All right. Three of the four shows we're filming this weekend will be on the network. Very nice. So look out the new stuff from RWA, uh, Uprise, which is uh, exclusive to the the network, which is the um, the up and coming uh, uh, of Rise Wrestling, and also okay. involving Ronnie Stark. That one I haven't he, seen yet, so I'm I'm gonna check that one out. Check that out. There's mm-hmm. there's some there's some uh, if you want, there's some samples on our YouTube page and our Facebook page for Indie Wrestling US too. Uh, to check that out, Ronnie, the up and coming Ronnie Starks, <laughs> yeah, the uh, the uh, ten year new uh, rookie, <laughs> the ten year rookie making his uh, uprise debut, making his uprise debut. That's fantastic. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad you're making something of yourself, kid. Thanks. Man. <laughs> I, I've made it. I've made it in the world. So, and uh, hashtag Ronnie two belts, of course, triple crown champion the triforce championship that's, uh, that's the fight society triple crown uh it's tag championship over there with you guys and of course jay's holding the uh bdw festival championship what festival did you win that from uh they do a lot of those fairs and festivals kind of I, I can't remember what it was called <laughs> <laughs> was it a barbecue fest was no, it a... it was just a it was just a regular fair you just know? A fair it was, it was a nice right. little fair okay yeah you know some wrestling. Yeah. And a belt. I think I have to defend that thing in a couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah. I think. That's awesome. Um guess it's going to be a triple threat because. Yeah, because he's the champion right now. Yeah. Your book, kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the wrestling world. <laughs> so all the world needs is another triple threat. That's right. That's right. That's all we get in wrestling nowadays is triple threat. Triple mm-hmm. threat tag team. Triple mm-hmm. threat. Yeah. This. I mean, look at the shine on this thing right now, you know. I gotta do is paint it, clean it up, and I've never seen I've never seen it. a shiny black, you know, <laughs> like it, it's really shiny. Title man. I've never seen that before. Yeah, the kittens were really interested in it earlier. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, the kitten was getting high because it smelled like nail polish. That's right. Nice. 
And, uh, yeah. Whereas that'll be coming up October 11th. You guys will be uh, involved with that. With yes. your, they, they didn't shine that belt up until you guys won it. Well, yeah. So, we had, you know, we had to make them look nice. There you go. Uh, so you're talking about, um, other wrestling options. And, um, of course, uh, in a couple weeks here, uh, we are going to be having our Tuesday, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday night war, uh, victory party, uh, as SmackDown is moving to Fridays. Uh, we win. Uh, but it turns out there's a new challenger approaches as impact wrestling is moving to access on Tuesdays. And they needed that. They, they needed that. They needed something, right? Finally, yeah. something. That I, I a channel I actually I have but, and a lot but a lot of people don't a lot of people don't I don't think I have it and I think it's still going to be streaming on Twitch so another okay another but is be, better than Destination you X? can download Twitch or Destination <laughs> come Wait, on what, man right, what the hell I, was that what the hell was that channel what was it Destination it was Destination, it was Destination America. America Destination America the, the, and what, they what had was, the Amish the haunted Amish barbecue show now, now what was now what was that channel they was on before Skin that show? um the one that came. Like like wrestling came on like right after or so pop pop yeah it was pop that used to be the, the TV former guy channel. TV guy yeah. channel yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. What's oh really my funny, god they've come a long way what's really funny about pop is like when TNA was on there it was all censored and it was like no swearing or anything yet and they would they would do the Big Brother after show and every other word of the Big Brother after show was fuck yeah and it was nine o'clock at night I'm just like yo Impact like I think you're allowed to swear in your shows man I gotta be honest with you I tried to watch Impact earlier today yeah and <laughs> wrestling it, it seems like they're going backwards like they're, they're starting up just the, the whole format the way it looks now and everything it's um, they, they've cut the budget they definitely now cut listen, the budget. Man, like these these were these this guys looks were like some old doing, school and disclaimer I, ha- I have worked for impact okay um it, these were the twitch streams when they were going to and i don't know if they're still doing this they were basically going to indie promotions like okay. rockstar pro we did this place with Rockstar Rockstar Pro in Dayton, Ohio, mm-hmm. and and it was it was they were shows and they were under the Impact Wrestling banner, but mm-hmm. they were basically high pay per view streamed indie shows that had some Impact guys like the local Rockstar or whatever the promotion is, right? And they did this a lot of different places, um, and it built up their Twitch stream, and that's a whole that's a business model now, right? Yeah, um, I like they have a deal with Twitch, like it was a big deal, like it was weird talking to. Um, uh, mission control, not mission control, but you know, production control or whatever in Canada <laughs> yeah, to yeah. connect to Twitch, right? Yeah. It's just like, wow, this is like a really interesting connection here. Um, and obviously, everything got scaled back. They moved it to Canada and that kind of thing. You know, you know, the, the smart things. And and if you talk to people in that company, they're like, you know, it's like, well, you know, we we. We don't have this money to throw around now because that's how we got in this position in the first place. Right. Like they identify that, like you know, mm-hmm. you know, everything from you know we, we you know looking at things inside and out, like from how much money did we throw at Sting and Hulk Hogan, you know, back in yeah. the day, versus this and the other things they spent money on that didn't do anything. I mean, I'm fine with them performing in small places. I mean, because that's how the impact, mm-hmm. the original impact zone back in what was it, Orlando, right? Mm-hmm. That's how that's how that looked. Right, right. So, it's a studio. Yeah. I mean, like, okay, like they did a couple shows in um, Las Vegas. What was it Sam's something? What's that? What's that place? And they've done they, 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 they've they've done there quite some, a few times. They've done tapings in Mexico City as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's cool. And then, and then they did, and then of course they always go to the former ECW arena. Yeah, yeah. And then they had that and, place and do in stuff uh, down Tennessee. There. The fairgrounds, yeah, like, yeah, that right. one, that one was nice. But, too. Yeah, they did. They went back there, and because I think the fairgrounds are getting torn down, perhaps. Yeah. Um, and so they, they they had like one final show as a throwback kind of situation. So you know, it's cool that they're like paying homage to that. You know, the good old now, days of TNA on Wednesday nights. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now I, I watched. I tried to watch. Um, I, I guess because you know, like Impact Wrestling is doing like whatever it was a pay per view. Everything is free now. Like yeah, they yeah. just put it, they just put and it some of them are still pay per views. So like Bound for Glory is a pay per view and and things like that too. Right, traditionally. right. Those yeah. are yeah. This and one can... was um Victory Road. Yeah, they did Victory Road last week, and I tried to watch as much as I could, and it's just I don't know. There's something <laughs> missing. I yeah. don't know what it is, and because you know I I watch any kind of wrestling. Yeah, yeah. Anything. All women's wrestling, midget wrestling, I watch it all. <laughs> Something about that 
It's little people wrestling, sir. It's 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 oh <laughs> my fault. Is that what we were supposed correct, to call it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a little person. You gotta be politically. It just correct. has to be. If they have a problem with me saying midget, they can come on the show. Well, we had my ass. we had one on that had a problem, but anyways, you know. that was years ago. Hey, uh, <laughs> I'll put the title on the line. <laughs> there How about that? There you yeah. go. Hey yeah. man. <laughs> hey. <laughs> now it's a now it's uh what is it like a what do you call it? I I want I want to say like uh three four quarters match or something but what do you say when it's a half a person <laughs> uh half point match <laughs> Jeez. I, it, the promotion is called you extreme. don't like what i'm saying come come what, there my, you go micro micro oh, he's, he's the fan your belt like halfway through the show you'll be lucky you got a chance to get it back Jeez. yeah i'm surprised that eric didn't because remember a couple shows ago i was talking about ray monroe mm-hmm. remember i talked trash on him did mm-hmm. he ever get back to me no no he still owes mad mike a belt so a belt shot so oh uh, okay because uh, yeah, i remember yeah, i was yeah, 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 yeah. I was talking some trash about him, and uh, I didn't hear back from him. I said, well, I guess he don't want some, none of this. Some Sorry, con- man. I didn't, you didn't even have to talk trash on me. I just gave you a fucking belt. So, it was good. You didn't give it to me. I took it from you. But that's okay, though. <laughs> from that's the chat okay. room, Alex from California. <laughs> the X and Access stands for uh, pro wrestling. Uh, also, a uh, fun fact, the original Impact Zone, I believe that's the one down in uh, uh, Universal Studios, yes. Uh, yes. was apparently the same studio they had Nickelodeon Guts taped at. Yes. Sweet. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's that was see. a good show. Now, imagine AJ Styles climbing the aggro crag. <laughs> now that's my, in your head. My dream as a child, I wanted to be on Guts. I know. I wanted to be on Double Dare. Yeah. I and was, uh, I was Legends like, of Hidden Temple. I wanted to be on Double Dare. Yeah. I wanted to be on Nick Arcade, man. Yeah. Because yeah. the black dude, the host, he had me hyped all the time. Yeah. He had that corny music. I, I loved it. It was such a good show. There was a there was a video game game show that was on like Saturday mornings on some channel at like six a.m. and it was like they played video games for the first half and the second half was like it was like supermarket streak. Like you get depending on how well you did, you got so much time to like go into this like setup with all the games on the shelf and you got to grab whatever you wanted. <laughs> oh man, kind of thing, and like that was your prize. That kind of sounds like me when I was a preteen, you know, back in my in my shoplifting days. That was <laughs> oh, you did that in real life? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like this is a game show. I'm made for it. Yeah. Oh my god, it was so it was so easy to steal shit back in the nineties <laughs> before the was. before they installed and before they installed um, cameras and security. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Toys R Us was so easy to steal from them and KB Toys. That's probably why KB oh, went out of business. <laughs> R.I.P. R.I.P. Oh, I stole from them <laughs> many times. What a great store that was. Though. Oh God, remember those um those bendy action figures? Yeah. And if you lifted their arms too much, the wire broke, and then their arms were just stuck a certain way, and mm-hmm. you couldn't do anything with them. I they still just... remember those old WCW figures where they were basically vibrators. Oh yeah. You know yeah. those things? Oh my god. Yep. I, I have a Ron Simmons figure <laughs> somewhere in the house. I don't know how the hell I got it. I didn't even know he was in WCW. <laughs> he, he was the WCW he was, champion. He was the first he was the first African American WCW slash NWA he was like the first, champion. He was the first African American heavyweight champion. Heavyweight champion, period. Well, first. Yeah. As far yeah. as televised is concerned, because they 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 have been arguing that there were champions before him. Well, yeah, in the territories, the thun- right? Yeah. Right, yeah, territories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the Thunderbolt so, the so Thunderbolt Patterson. World and all champion, that. right? And, and Sailor yeah. Art. Whatever his name is. It was a big is, deal so. for Atlanta based WCW in the oh, mid yeah. 90s. Well, you know what? If it was such a big deal, then how come Vader didn't sell it? Mm-hmm. Remember how remember how we power slammed it was one, two, three, and then Vader just got he, it popped right back he up? Powdered, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. what was that about? That's that's it's it's the nineties. I don't in think he, I don't think he wanted to lose the belt no. to him. No, but I really don't. That could have been just Vader in general, though. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But yeah, yeah. No, no. I, I mean, not to mention, not to, not to say it still wasn't around controversy, but still was a big moment for that. Oh, it was a great. Yeah. It was a great. Oh yeah, it was a great match. Mm-hmm. You know, the dude. What? What? what how, how does Jim Cornette say they? He potatoed the hell out of him. I guess potato <laughs> is like you just hit him. You know, the hard hits. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Vader was really good. Him. Vader was really good about that. I remember the bloody uh, uh, Saturday Night's main event match with Mick Foley, Cactus Jack. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, I, I saw him that. DVD. Beat the hell out of yeah. each other. That was awesome. Yeah. Oh boy. Hey guys, uh, I want to talk more wrestling, of course, and also we need to deliver uh, Ronnie's uh, performance review here <laughs> later in the show. <laughs> yeah. uh, before oh, that, I want to give a shout out to our friends that have been supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, our friends from Slice on Broadway. If you're in town visiting, 
Who knows why you ended up here, but if you do, please go check out our friends at BH2, Carnegie, PA, East End, or PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates here in the greater Pittsburgh area. Uh, they've been supporters for a while, and of course, I know a lot of you are all over uh, the country listening to this show, maybe international. Ooh, Slice International. I would love, you know, in Can- you go to Canada. Jordan Stiles just came back from Canada, so we were talking about that today when he was playing with kittens. Um, and, and you know how you go to Canada, and I was like, it's Burger King, but we put a maple leaf on the logo. It's it's <laughs> McDonald's, but it's Pizza Hut, but the little eye has a maple leaf on it. You know, uh, I want Slice on Slice on Broadway with a little maple leaf on top of the eye, maybe, or maybe the pepperoni is a maple leaf. Uh, if you got a Broadway Avenue in your town, please take a picture of it. Please tweet PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter and tell them you want to slice on your Broadway and help them with their global expansion. They started with one location right up the street from our studio here several years ago, still supporting us. And uh, and I like to think that we gave them the mayhem bump to their four locations all across the city. Hell, I think they even own the building next door to us. Great haircuts, by the way. Great haircuts. Recommended. It looks good. <laughs> so <laughs> come in, get a haircut, reenact the barbershop window um, um, instance in, uh, Shawn Mike- with Shawn Michaels and uh, uh, Marty Janetti. There's a barber pole and everything out there. They I was actually say, if you ever want to reenact that scene. Yeah, exactly. I'm surprised <laughs> as many wrestlers come by here. I'm I'm amazed nobody has. Uh, but anyways, dude, I got a leather jacket at the house, but I'll put it on. Let's let's do that. You and Ronnie, right? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll I, you guys figure out which one's Marty. I'm Sean. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, Ronnie. Ronnie Janetti. No, I like Marty Janetti. So. Yeah. Oh, I like Ron. I like Marty Schnetti too, but uh, he just wasn't sure. He Marcus. was. I rooted for Marty. I yeah. rooted for Marty. Marty was like, I feel for you, Marty. Ma- but Marty could have been heavyweight champion, but uh, <laughs> so then wow. were, I thought I, I was. I wouldn't go that far. I thought I was the sorry. comedian. Sorry. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> wow. Go check out our funny. friends SlaysonBroadway.com. Don't don't throw anybody through their window, please. Uh <laughs> And we are going to be back. You're going to hear from Katie for a moment about some other stuff we do around here. And we'll be back with the big question. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. We are here. Well, we didn't go anywhere. You didn't go anywhere. You're still listening. You just, you just, there was just a little bit of commercial and, and Katie got to talk to you for a moment. And now it's us. I'm Mike Sorg. I'm at Sorgatron. How you doing out there? Ronnie Starks is with us. I'm also at Sorgatron. He's also at Sorgatron. No, you're not at Sorgatron. You're at Sorgatron Media. Oh, I'm. You're yeah. here in the studio. Inside the studio. Inside the, inside Sorgatron Media. We're both inside you right now. No, no. Jay Cooper no, is here. Thank you for making the joke because I wasn't sure if I was going to make that joke or not. <laughs> Where are we going with this? Uh, Jay Cooper, comedian, extraordinaire. AJ Styles fan, like current PDW yeah. festival champion. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Why, he is why not is like. That, why is that funny though? He's I mean, not let go of that belt. He's like, this is not going anywhere. It looks I good on leaving, me, man. It goes, I'm leaving with this. He, he's had a death grip on it. I still, I still love that the festival championship has like all these countries on it. Like, I would love if you just went to like. Like and I've been festivals. to most of these countries too, which yeah. is awesome. <laughs> really? Yeah, so, yeah, really I, I, I mean, I lived in Germany okay. for like five, six years. So yeah, never. Well, yeah, I've been to Canada. I've been to Italy. Uh, the world traveled. England, Jay Cooper. Never been to Australia. Never been to Japan. Bonnie, never been have, to Mexico. How's your passport? My passport. Time. Yes, oh, I have one. I've had it for a year. Let's That's do this. That's send you. Let's send you. It makes it, let's make that a world title. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to all these different festivals. I'm I'm going to go to Oktoberfest in Germany, and I'm going to defend it at Oktoberfest. I was going to say, because you can't really call it a world championship if you don't it's gonna look defend like, it it's gonna all look, over the world, that's right? That's right. That's I mean, right. That's right. I mean, because you know WWE was getting away with that for the longest time. One of the local promotions is having their champions defend uh, their belts up in a Canadian promotion. I'm like, mm. well, that, that counts. Yeah. That counts. Yeah, okay. You're one step closer to being a world championship. Mm-hmm. But, you know. I, I get I get kind of antsy when like the local promotion in a bingo hall says and now the world champion I was like mm, no you're the mm, bingo right. champion yeah you're like yeah. that always bothered me but this was like many years after the fact though I mean right. you, you, your world this I'm talking WWWF yes okay but you only really wrestled in the northern territory well, at that point but they were at that international. time I mean yeah yeah. 
And but to call them to say they're a world champion when they really technically never really defended when you got to it. like the NWA world title because there was a lot there was international stuff that happened with that. Right. I don't know when it started, but you know, or WWF. I think I think they got around a good bit um, by the time they were probably calling a world title. But also, it's a heavyweight title. We're also calling a heavyweight title and have some somebody that could be on two or five live as your champion. I mean, there's a little break there, but I mean it's it's apples and oranges i mean it's it's whatever your promotion wants to be mm-hmm. you know i love it when it's just like the promotion title you yeah. know especially when like uh you know something like revenge pro doesn't sound like some letter championship you know yeah uh like i like i like that because that that feels or imagine wrestling you know it's, or, it or makes something more like sense. that yeah yeah but i don't know i guess when you put world in in front of champion mm-hmm. it just gives it prestige or something yeah, yeah. so but it's also you know. a little bit of like this is how a wrestling promotion works you have a world champion you have a you know secondary title you have a tag champion you know kind of thing right mm-hmm. so at least like you get something like you know fight society has like this triple crown champion it has a contenders champion you know and there's like a different thing that happens where they're, they're trying to be different you know in that kind of case you know right i don't think they call the fight society champion a world champion i think it's just maybe a heavyweight champion i've heard it yeah but i, I but before i thought it was just the fight society champion i'm the legend of zona champion <laughs> <laughs> try first title yeah there's yeah. that too but uh you know i think that's fun that is not the big question i got a big question for you shoot we we're talking we we're kind of speculating on the music situation with wwe and of course and we were talking off air um well on stream but off air off recording about AEW and their bands and music situation over there hey where are they going to do with it with that um what if you got to pick uh, but, you know, we were kind of like, you know, kind of joking what Slipknot did all the music with, you know, Corey Taylor from Slipknot did all the music for NXT from now on, I'd be okay you know, with right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, if there's a producer, uh, artist of some sort that you would like to see become like that core, uh, producer of sorts for WWE or a part of WWE, but mm-hmm. let's just say WWE in general, uh, who would that be? You know, I was just thinking about somebody off top, but I don't think he's a music producer. I just know he's in a band <laughs> and and that he has money and that he owns a wrestling company also. Mm. I know what you're talking about. Okay. Smash okay. Pumpkins, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. So with Billy the end, Corgan. I, I've fallen out following what's happening with uh, NWA, just a little bit of tweets here and there from Dave Lagana. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, like, that's one thought when they came up. I was like, oh, is he doing all the, like, is he, like, does that mean NWA is going to have really good music now for the entrance theme? <laughs> you know? Not yet. Uh, but... <laughs> or just really, you know, emotionally. <laughs> I haven't heard or, any. Or just but... like emotional 90s aggro rock. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Which you know, there's a demo for that, mm-hmm. but yeah, yeah I mean, because I, I hear NWA is they're thinking about getting a, a, a network also. I think I've been trying for road. it for sure. Yeah. Like everybody, like everybody's getting on a on, on a major network. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which yeah, is really good. Hey, wrestling really sought out. This after. This, mm-hmm. it, this feels like the modern version of the territories, mm-hmm. and I'm loving it. Yeah, wrestling's becoming good again. There's more television. There's options now. Yeah, for years from from the year two thousand one to about you know for for the longest twenty fifteen yeah mm-hmm. to say it, it, was, it was just WWE down our throats. I mean, I read about Ring of Honor in the magazines. I mm-hmm. still collect or read Pro Wrestling Illustrated. That's how I was able to know. Oh, you're the one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're yeah. the one still. I am so magazines. glad that that meant that's one of the few wrestling magazines that is still around. I tell you what, to keep me up to date with what's going on in the world, because I would have known, I wouldn't know who a Jimmy Havoc was mm-hmm. before he made the television. I would have known who. My support for PWI is I bought both a digital and a, and a uh, paper copy of the PWI 500 this year. Nice, because I wanted to get it because I couldn't get it anywhere local. And I finally went to a Walmart that had it way in the back in the dustbin. Uh, so like I just bought <laughs> it like last bin. week. You Can know, that? Well, the, the, basically the magazine rack uh, that they put in the back by the bathrooms now. <laughs> <laughs> back back near back near the porn that's still in the sealed yeah. plastic. Let's packages. not put it in the front so people who's, will stumble who's on. Who's buying it. that shit? It's the internet, not at Walmart. It's the internet. They don't now. even have it at sheets anymore. That's what the internet's for, man. The internet's for porn. <laughs> that's right. 
But you, oh, you missed the awesome cast where we were talking about that. Who jerks off to pages now? No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I, haven't, I haven't done that since <laughs> I was like 16, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, and and uh, connective note, uh, awesome cast this week. Uh, we talk about Borderland porn on, on Pornhub. So just, uh, and that's Katie that brought that up. Uh, so uh, show preview. Uh, Ronnie, do you have one that's not Billy Corgan? I don't know. That's a good question. I can give you mine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah let's I can give you mine. I want Trent Reznor to do it. Who? Ooh. Trent Reznor. I, I know that name. Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. Okay. And I, I've, I've been listening to Nine Inch Nails. I think that'd be a fun one because he's done music soundtracks. He did the soundtrack for the um um uh, girl with the girl with the dragon tattoo. Great movie. Uh, the remake they did recently. Okay. Uh, he's been attached to. He did the music for the Facebook movie. So, so the social network okay. that he did several years ago. Yeah. Okay. Like he's been doing that kind of stuff. Hell, he did the music for the first Quake game. Okay. That's why the little little ammo boxes had nine inch nail logos on them. Uh, and they were for the nail gun. Uh, you know, I, I think he's just a general accomplished, accomplished thing. The ones where I think he was producer on some of the early uh, Marilyn Manson albums are still some of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Um, it, 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 this could be like, I, you know, like we're joking about Corey, Corey Taylor, um, you know, he could be like the NXT music guy, right? Because that's that edgy thing, mm-hmm. and and he could sink his teeth into a little bit. Uh, so that could be fun there. Okay. So that's that's my thought there, Ronnie. That's, not, that's, a, that's a good yeah. idea. Have you uh, have you ever heard of a band called Nothing More? No. They uh, they have really good instrumental music, so I think they would be really good. You have to look them up. But uh, I've been enjoying their uh, albums lately. I have to put that in my Google Music. Yeah. Another music like producer it. just jumped in my head. I think I I think I have his name right. Scotty Torch. That's his name. What's he connected with? Um, he he, he helped produce a lot of music for um R and B and hip hop artists mm-hmm. in the late nineties, early two thousands. Mm-hmm. Um, so he be would good. be nice too. So WWE or AEW. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Either one. Either one. Um. You know, or who the hell like who who are these bands that Ring of Honor be having like play their music <laughs> and stuff? Because those guys is good. Like yeah, they're not that bad. Yeah, because you know what? One of my favorite theme songs and they right get now listed. on Ring of Honor is um what the bouncers that that music yeah that, that that heavy that rock and then you hear them chanting beer beer. So beer. I, I don't know if that. they have like a producer or if it's like like. Uh, the royalty free music, like how they used to grab like the, the Hardy Boys theme or something, you okay. know, like I, I don't know. Because every time I see them come out and they and they'll and they'll mention the name of the song and who the band oh. is or whoever, and I've never heard of any of them before. Wrestling Connection, uh, Tina Keys out in Seattle, uh, says that uh, Scott Torch produced Brooke Hogan's single, uh, "Time Break Into the Time She Tried to Break Into Pop." I think she's saying. A he film. did. I remember that. So there is a wrestling connection. Yes. Of sorts. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's um, see. Rob. Rob. Uh, was not his finest moment. <laughs> well, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't the world's finest moment. Uh, Rob oh. Brown. Uh, I think Weezer's uh, Rivers Cuomo uh, uh, could be a good wrestling music guy. He's got a uh, good range and is very public. Uh, let's see. Chris says uh, Hans Zimmer. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Tina says, oh, gosh, there's a list. But for a, a few select performers to grab the mainstream audience would be Timberland. I was going to say Timberland because he has worked with WWE before. He has. He did that. It was a terrible song, but I liked it. <laughs> it and was he had, and like, he had the, and he had the um, I was just watching it like last week. Um, he had the WWE Divas on there. I think it was like the WWE Divas versus um, Extreme Expose or whatever. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, so wow. we're going we're going back to the early ECW Ooh, time like you're going to 2009. Late 2000s, yeah. Yeah. And um, it was not one of Timberland's best songs. Mm-mm. I like the video though, because I love looking at Tori Wilson and Kelly Kelly well, and, and Layla and Brooke. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was nice. The video saved the song, mm-hmm. but without it, I would have been like, "What the fuck is this?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hot garbage is uh, is what it was. <laughs> 
I wouldn't even set it on fire. I wouldn't even. It's, <laughs> you wouldn't even it's, piss on it if it was on fire. It's cold garbage. <laughs> it's cold garbage. I love it. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh well, that uh, is room temperature garbage. Room temperature that is garbage. I would. <laughs> it's like you open up the trash chute, you smell it. You're like, oh, I'm just gonna close the door now. Yep. Nope. Walking away from this. Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. Hey, there's a lot of wrestling. <laughs> not only on television but also just here in the pittsburgh area yes if you're visiting this is what i love I, I, you know other sites it, you know the southern california does this and, and it's an idea uh that uh, I, I wanted to see here for pittsburgh because i feel like there's just so much freaking wrestling yes it was strange this past weekend had nobody in pittsburgh wrestling i mean maybe you guys were personally i don't know but uh you know but uh, I, had to I am looking forward to one day getting in a local ring and doing something. Oh, that's a whole other conversation. I, yeah. Like, I've been, this is something I've been talking about with a couple of people. I think I brought it up with you a while ago. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's too late for me to wrestle. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm pushing 38. But with, you know, the way I am on the mic, I would love to be a mouthpiece. Let me be. You could be a manager. Yeah, I want to be a manager. Mm hmm. And, and, like, and, and I want to be one of those. I want to be like one of the top managers. Like, don't put me there with the black managers that don't like, you know, manage champions. So I'm not trying to be the Teddy Long so or the or, or slick. No, I want to be like Bobby slick. Heenan and Jimmy Hart and freaking, you know, I want to be the guy that actually manages champions. Damn it! Yeah. You ever notice that? Did yeah. you ever notice how Teddy Long rarely ever managed a champion? Did the did the, the Ron Siemens Butch Reed team have a championship? That was it. Yeah, that was it. Man. Other than that, what else has who else did he manage? That always was a be champion? the Sherry Martel. Who did Slick Slick manage some of the best wrestlers in the WWE in the eighties? Yes, mm-hmm. he did. I mean, he had the Warlord. Mm-hmm. He had Hercules, Paul Roma. He had Big Boss Man. He had Akeem. Mm-hmm. The African Not dream. one of them <laughs> won a freaking title. He managed Kamala. He did not ever bring a freaking title. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That's sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. That's sad because mm-hmm. he was good. Mm-hmm. He had the look. He had the style. Boss Man and Akeem was coming out to his theme music He had because the they didn't have their own theme music he had, then. He had the best parts when they all sang Land of a Thousand Dances. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, the 80s. Anyways, brother. Brother. <laughs> locally here in Pittsburgh, you want to catch up on wrestling and all the crazy stuff going on. Guys, there's there are four wrestling shows, five. Am I seeing this? Five wrestling shows? Yeah, there For are now, anyway, five there will be wrestling more shows this weekend in the Pittsburgh area. There are three Saturday and two on Sunday. Okay. In the greater Pittsburgh area, within an hour drive of Pittsburgh. Well, lay it on me. That's crazy. Uh, you can go check out PittsburghWrestling.com and find out who those are. Two of them are, <laughs> K- surprise, two of them are KSWA. Uh, I knew it. One is Renegade is Wrestling one Alliance. Favorite. Renegade Wrestling Alliance, of course, oh, is God. having their fall free for all, uh, where uh, WC uh, superstar Lodi is going to be there. Facade is going to debut for that promotion. Uh, we also have Havoc in the Heights with uh, Sam Adonis taking on a uh, friend of the show, Sexy Fireman. Tyler, uh, uh, Jason Tyler, I'm sorry, uh, and a few other guys popping up there that you'd be familiar with. And then, of course, Uprise. Ronnie will be there. Yep. And you can check out all that over at PittsburghWrestling.com. Check out all the wrestling and uh, uh, Pittsburgh Wrestling that makes the news. Recently, our uh, friends from uh, South America had a uh, championship match at Fight Society that got featured on Mala Club. Uh, we translated the article for you, by the way, at least the blurb, uh, over on our page so you can check that out. And other local news, Brohemoth in the newspaper, uh, Laura Love is getting featured on the West Virginia um, television, uh, uh, TV news, <laughs> sorry, uh, and so much more. Go check out all of it. Uh, oh, PB Smooth in the Erie Times, who uh, just recently won the uh, Revenge Championship over the weekend. And so much more. Check out the calendar. Check out what's coming up at PittsburghWrestling.com. You can see when they bring it. There's already dates. Rise and KSWA already have dates uh, coming up here for 2020. And you can get your planning started now. Is that family vacation going to be, uh, you know, going to be in lieu of a, a Rise Wrestling show? You can find out. That's how I did my planning. Okay. Uh, I mean, geez, look at. The, I'm looking at uh, October in pro wrestling. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine shows. Oh wow! Are listed currently, and I'm sure I actually I know for now, any big headline matches. Uh, well, it's a little bit of everything. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know. It, it, not all of these all have matches um, announced just yet. I don't believe so. Uh, keep an eye out for the uh, their local uh, uh, information for that. I got so. my eye on one local guy hmm. who I think needs to be with a big company one day. Hey, thanks, pal. <laughs> Besides you. Oh, I appreciate that. I mean, you you were a two-time champion, or, you know. A... Well, you know, the show's not over yet. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's this guy, I think he wrestled for KSWA as, as, as well as other local promotions. Hmm. Um, Sly Scarpone. <laughs> oh, yes. yes, Sly Scarpone. Sorry, there's... I like that guy. He's interesting. I like him. Um, his promos are interesting. Yeah. But, I mean, he has the look. Mm-hmm. He has the look. He has the skills. I have a feeling, you know... It, it, if given the right opportunity, I, I can see him with, with somebody. I think the Rev Ron Hunt had a championship match with him at Millville Days last weekend, actually. Oh, yeah? So, unfortunately, I couldn't stick around because I had no wrestling show to go to. But <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, so that, I, I, I had messaged him many times, and I said, dude, you need to pitch to Ring of Honor because he could play like the twin or little brother of um, what's, that, what's, what's that guy? What's that guy? That, the guy that used to that used to be with um, the guy All Night Express at one time, Rhett Rhett Titus. Rhett Titus. Tell me he don't look like uh, Rhett, Rhett Titus. Titus. Oh, okay, yes. okay. I can they see look that. alike, I can see that. man. I said, to, I said, dude, you could do something with this. Mm-hmm. I messaged him many times. He hasn't gotten back to me. I'm trying to help you out, bro. I'm trying to help you out because Rhett Titus he changes gimmicks. Every six months, he, he seems so, to. I remember when I he mean, was. The, wasn't he like the Velvet Lover and un, under a mask or something for a while? Oh, he was. Um, yeah. What was his name? Um, the, um, the oh god, oh the Romantic Touch. The Romantic. That touch. was his name. Yeah. He wore the mask. He came down with the rose. Man, he hasn't played that character in years. Mm-hmm. Now he's like the one, like the. But then he was or something. That that's that's yeah. over. <laughs> Then, really? it, then then he started this narcissistic crap that he was doing for a while because he got all I, super I, ripped. I think he went back to that, to be honest. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, dude, you're ripped, but you're like thin ripped. You're like, you're like baby Luger. You know what I'm saying? Like baby <laughs> Lex Luger, you know? I just, uh, I was just going back through some old stuff and found uh, him versus Val Venus from about 2011 in the in the area. Are you kidding me? Well, like, keep an eye on the YouTube for that. It might be posted already. You actually. said 2011. 2011. Around so that, this was like Val Venus like past his prime. Oh, he was wearing he was uh, He was already bald and he, fat. He was no, oh, no, it wasn't that bad. He was he, he was wearing uh, but he's wearing MMA shorts for some reason and uh, he gave a motivational speech after the match. Oh, so okay. it was interesting. It I was think I've actually seen that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. up at Franklin PA? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that that's interesting. Um. Anyways, oh, where did I want to go with this segment? Oh, your performance reports. Oh no. Yes. Oh yeah. Hold on. Let me pull it up here. My, we uh, uh, asked our Patreon supporters. My TPS reports. Your TPS reports. Yes. We asked our Patreon uh, people to, uh, you know, of course, Ronnie, you've been here for a little bit. Uh, it's it's time for performance reviews to see how you're doing. He's been, you know, he's he's the proby uh, here on the show as, as an official co-host, and he asked for this. He is like, hey, can yep. you can I just be a thing? And be like, yeah, let's mm-hmm. just make this a thing, you know. Um, so uh, we did get one. This one is from uh, Alex Cars and Occupy Pro Wrestling at the twenty dollar level. Mm-hmm. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for supporting the show continually here. So, the following is a performance review of one Ronnie Starks, recent employee of uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, unincorporated, henceforth, WMS on Inc. Huh. Or Unk. That's interesting. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, we have, we, we, let's go down the skill levels here. Uh, number one, job knowledge and skills, commendable. Works results, satisfactory. Communication, outstanding. Wow. Initiative and problem solving outstanding. Uh, interpersonal uh, relations and EEO needs improvement. I don't know what that means much. EEO. I used to know what that means. I don't know. I'll, I'll work on that, whatever that means. We'll look it up and work on that, right? Yeah. Uh, work habits outstanding. 
Supervision and management commendable. You are a foreman. Yeah, yeah. You are a foreman in your other position with mm-hmm. OSHA. Okay. Overall rating commendable. Comments. Needs to respect superiors, namely Mad Mike and Hill Bradley. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Employee strength being, being Ronnie Starks. Opportunities for development being Ronnie Starks. Uh, and I hope his vo- performance review meets the highest standards and expectations of WMS on Inc. Alex Cars, this is your Ronnie Starks. This is your performance review. That was a good performance review, actually. That was yeah. They went really well. I, yeah, they I, they were nice to you. Like, I what the, the hell was that? Me it was terrible, and I should quit the business. And, uh, that's California for you. Yeah, that's You're true. Nice out there. Thanks, California guys. <laughs> you should uh, you should fly us out there. You know. <laughs> uh though no, i actually I, I watch a lot of wrestling shows and, and i always have lunch with or, or something with alex whenever i uh end up in the greater la area so uh so it's uh thank you for submitting that and if you are on patreon i we did I, there, actually somebody did drop a per- performance review earlier uh with you uh, uh, uh and i can't find it oh here ron uh chris out there says ronnie gets a uh C plus could have been a B plus if he uh, took a chop from every guest. <laughs> if he uh, took a what? He got one from Beast Man. Yeah, I think that was enough. Yeah, like shirts were off and everything. Yeah, I'm not gonna get beat up every week just for your people's entertainment. No, that's so no. Can't touch this. No, there's no <laughs> wrestling. Can't touch this. Fantastic. Uh, we were talking a little oh. more AEW. Uh, the next Wednesday is the debut. October yes. 2nd. I'm sure we'll have more rumors yes. and news uh, a week from now. So the second show is but in Pittsburgh, correct? No, I think it's the third, third or fourth, or fourth show. Yeah. Third show? Okay. It's like the yeah. last one of the month. I mean, we have tickets for it. You know, yeah. You think we'd... Uh... I think everybody in this room has tickets for that show. Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody in the chat room has tickets for that show. So that means we have to meet show. up before the show then. Yeah. Yeah. Pre-game. Free yes. game over, and I'm not used to going to shows in in Oakland, because uh, <laughs> all it's beside it is the hospital. Oh, we can go to the hospital cafeteria before the show. Do they have beer? I don't think so. Not the hospital. Well, then we can get the hospital food. I mean, hospital food's okay. It's I not guess. bad. It was very my mom. Depends on which hospital you go to. I no, work. You know what? <laughs> I mean, I, I I work in Oakland, so yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So I was thinking Presby, you know. Okay, we're getting super local here, guys. That's cool. So, but it's gonna be it's cool closer. to see. I, I think. I think the speculation. I feel like Warlow's gonna debut there. Yeah. Since he's, I mean, Pittsburgh's where he's a Cleveland guy, but Pittsburgh's really where he's made mm-hmm. his thing. And also, here he's done a lot of great things too. Um, and really, where he's developed and had an opportunity. And I think that's gonna be the biggest like reaction is here. Mm-hmm. I will say okay, because I I don't know much about Warlow, uh-huh. but. Whoever put together that little video package of him was pretty nice. I mean, where he was walking with his girl, and then like the dude stopped him, and he did he did some Jack Reacher type shit and just whooped like four or five guys' asses. Mm-hmm. I, th- I mean, it looked a little too movie ish, but I, it was a nice little setup for the guy. Yeah, yeah, it, nice it, little... got, it got my attention because mm-hmm. I had no idea who the hell this guy was. So it, I'm it, like, it, it made him look like such a badass. Yeah, he did look it, like a badass. The, the great thing is, like, the guy doesn't need help looking like a badass. Yeah, he's just <laughs> right, genuinely a badass. Yeah, he's yeah. just like naturally a badass. Yeah. Right, like I don't think he had to do that. No, 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 no. I think he could have just walked by while somebody was talking and just like nudge him off the chair and mm-hmm. then just keep keep it moving. Mm-hmm. He could have just did that. But and he's he just, had to look like a hero or something. And he's um, know? I mean, again, he had a great match this last weekend with um, uh, P- seven footer PB Smooth. Uh, had, doesn't have uh, amazing matches with uh, John McChesney and Bill Bill Collier up there in Revenge Pro over the last year as well. Um, and and he's he's a dude again. He's like big big jacked guy that can do a swan top. You know, and he's doing like crazy stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, power moves can move. You know, I, he's going to be great when he gets in there. Like now, I have like okay, he's been you know having a match with Shane Taylor and guys like that around uh, when they come into the area. Uh, he had a match with um um what's the name now? Damian Priest, I think now in NXT. Okay. Um, I forget what his former name was. Um, it was um. He was oh, in Ring of Honor. Shoot. I forget that marketing machine works. Yeah, I can't remember. Completely blanked it out. I know this guy, 
Um, Martinez, Punishment, yeah, Martinez. Punishment Martinez. Thank you. Woo! Uh, guys like that, he's been doing great. So he's had a lot of opportunities against guys on that caliber. Uh, it'll be great to see what happens when he's like on television with the guys of that caliber. Also, yeah. that they're impressed with them that much that they're going to put them on television on their their flagship which like ra- that. Which raises that, the question: Who would you like to see him work with in AEW? Can you imagine? currently? Oof. Oof, that'd be fun. Yeah. That'd be fun. I would love to that see. Would be nice. I would love to see, and I think he's worth he's worth more of this in general. But uh, you know what? I think Jack Jericho needs some backup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Mm-hmm. A Jer- Send the a Jericho body. And Jericho's seen him before. Jericho's been at a show with him on it before. Okay. A couple years ago. Okay. They need uh, to give Warlow his first match against MJF. Oh. Let MJF go out there, run his mouth. Warlow comes out, kicks his ass. And that'll be a good way to introduce. You know what's him. really going to happen? What's up? It's going to beat up the librarian. As not Leva Bates, sh- the other one. <laughs> Wait, which one? <laughs> not not, not Leva Bates. Which, which librarian? Not Leva, not Leva Bates, the other one. Yeah. The other oh, one. okay. The other guy that no one has any idea who he is. Yeah. That has got to be the worst gimmick. Hey, you're getting out there. You're getting out there. That's I mean, fine. They're, getting, they're getting their name out there. But I mean, I'm sorry. I liked her better when she was blue pants. Related. Real, yeah, but yeah, she. Blue pants was great. But it, th- this is <laughs> this mean, is like a weird bet the young bugs have with each other. Uh, and, and then and somebody singing the Price Is Right as she runs to the ring. That was <laughs> come on, man, come on, wasn't that cool? That was the height of Enzo and Cass, I think. Was yeah, blue pants was, getting over? That was it. That's great. Uh, Love of Bates got uh, Enzo and Cass over. Well, speaking <laughs> of them, what do you think about? Enzo and Kaz XL maybe maybe in AEW is that a, is that a rumor now? That's I am no. making it a rumor <laughs> right now. I am making it. A I am rumor rumorizing right this. Somebody out there is listening, right? That's right. Jay Cooper. That's right. Oh, Coop no. Troop you're, at Coop Troop Comedy is making a rumor you, right now. You're, you're not you're not rolling for the for the comeback, are you? <laughs> I mean, Kaz. He, now Cass he, is coming back around. He, he, he he's yeah. coming back around. He had some he, bad he times. He stopped the drinking. Yeah, he, he's back in fighting shape. Yeah, mm-hmm. Enzo yeah. still the mouthpiece. I feel like there's still something there. Like we, they gave us a little bit of something, but not what you know. We we didn't get to see all of what they could do. No, for us. no. I think um, it, it was cut short. Well, he had for both of them. Wasn't he having anxiety attacks or something when he came up? You know, which is also why we haven't seen Lars Sullivan. Mm-hmm. Because what happened to that, right? Yeah, I thought it was because he was a prick. <laughs> that might be too. Um, he needs to not voice his opinion on on Twitter. Oh right, there was some shady yeah. stuff there. Oh too. yeah, yeah. Um, that was stuff because I think so. There was some of that with Leave a Base, but I think that was older stuff too. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, hey, not everybody's built for being on that main roster, right? Or uh. Being on Twitter with an open mouth. Yeah, that's true. You could be, you could be, you could have the good look. You could have the build. You know, like like who, who was that? Who was that dude? Um, Mason Ryan. Yeah, you Mason remember Ryan him? Was cool. That that Welsh guy. Like he was with he was with. Um, yeah. Uh, what was the, the what core? Was the group? Not Batista. Not the core. The um. The Nexus. The Nexus. He was with mm. the Nexus for a while. Yeah. Had the great look. Mm-hmm. Six foot three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Made of you know chiseled granite rock. Good looking guy. Uh, Couldn't Rob, wrestle worth a damn. Rob wants to see Wardlow and Hangman Page. Yeah, I'd be in for that. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Definitely. That would be nice. Now I just want Wardlow and Hangman Page to have a, a horse duel. <laughs> I just hope AEW like doesn't joust? go the route of doing stupid gimmick They're matches. Not. Like, just... just do have have some nice solid matches. I think they're going to have fun. Bit. I think if you watch and know that vibe, you know, as we we talk about on the show, this promotion has been built on YouTube promos. Yeah, that's true. So far, they have sold out pay per views with YouTube promos. Being right. the elite has completely changed the face of professional wrestling. Yes, but now they're on a major. Network mm-hmm. where Maybe they have to answer don't. to certain people how they want certain but do things they. done. But do they? I don't they, know. You know what is the it, deal? It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be f- yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm pushing for them. They're I'm gonna, pulling for them. They're gonna I have the buzz, to... and I don't know what the bar is that they're promising TNT. But again, I want to remind people once again when we talk about wrestling, wrestling is consistently 
you know, when we were like saying, oh, Impact did a 0.9 this week and a 0.8, that is still, when you're talking about like it on Pop TV or Pursuit, and now they're going to be on TNT, like WWE at their lowest point is still the best cable program on television ratings wise consistently okay. for the cost mm-hmm. of doing a live show Ver- like it wins every time mm-hmm. like they have to aew needs to like sink to rock bottom for this not to work out for tnt right now yeah, yeah. i read something where they said that they got like a guaranteed first couple of years regardless of ratings or mm-hmm. something so that's good yeah well they're hoping they can build something up tnt is somebody that Somebody in TNT versus when they just said, we don't want wrestling, even though, even when WCW was at its lowest, was still some of the best ratings on those pro, those networks. Mm-hmm. And they That's just true. said, and they simply just, the new management just said, we don't want it. I can honestly say that I haven't watched TNT in so long, so this is nice for me to get back on watching that. It's not, the only thing I ever watched on TNT was reruns of shows. Yeah. Like Charm. Don't they get like the NBA Finals or Order, something? Or watch the NBA yeah. Finals. That's the only thing. And other than that, I never I never watched TNT. Now I have a reason they to, have, and especially on a Wednesday. And their shows have not been terribly accessible on digital. Yeah. Uh, and, after the fact. And you know what? I, I, I wanted to say this too. Um, for the past couple weeks on Raw, like on the USA Network, whenever they go to commercials, they still happen to just throw in an AEW promo. I don't know if you've noticed that or not. I haven't. Like they, they, it's on USA Network. I'm like, man, how are they getting away with that? But mm-hmm. yeah, Impact used to do the same thing. Um, because there's those nationally bought ads. Yeah, that don't connect. Right. You know, it was um, smart. Mm-hmm. It's like okay. You know, um, we'll be back uh, as Raw rolls on. And then they go right like, to a, just like locally, an AEW promo. Just like locally, I've known promoters that will, you know, they're having a big show come up. They'll buy time on the local networks mm-hmm. of anybody that would drive to a show during Raw. Yeah. You know? So, oh, my God. Which I don't know if that's always a good idea because here's Raw and here's what our promotion looks like. You know, <laughs> and we don't really... <laughs> comparatively do that yeah so oh my god i used to watch like i used to see really bad cheesy promos for you know local wrestling Mm -hmm. um xpw i believe was one at one time xpw or pwx or is it pw it was pwx like pwx PWX, it had the one dude is now fight society okay (laughs) okay so <laughs> we have been putting up, by the way, if you go to the PWX Network Facebook page, yeah. there are some 1998 era matches from their television show. Yes. That that, that have been with going your, on. With, with one of the commentaries, um, Larry Lalera. What was his name? <laughs> what? What was his name? So Larry Legend? No, what? that's a different guy. That was that's what he always used to say. He had to, I don't know if he was trying to fake a Mexican accent or something, but I just remember that. I, he was just like, you know, so so so. Roddy's reaction to this is great. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I don't remember his first name was Larry, and the, the way he said his last name was like Lelena or something like that. And I'm like, what the hell did he just say? Did he say Rivera? Maybe the people, maybe the people who's on the stream know what I'm talking about. PWX. I, to, I don't know like, about this crew. That's out there right now. Yeah, well, Google it while we're talking. Like Google it up and try and figure out who the hell. It is. This is from before Google. I mean, yeah. this is this dude. I was watching. I, I remember when Tarantula was one of the biggest. Tarantula was one of the biggest yeah. names in the company. I ran into him at the airport and I was scared I was going to get nachoed. I ran into him at a funeral. <laughs> Was he the reason? <laughs> no. He was just a friend of my friend. Like I saw him in the back. I mean, he looked like an older We we've mentioned this guy before. This older, guy, I more feel like, withered. I feel like, like this guy is like I feel like he's a foot taller than me at six four. Uh and uh but uh he, and in kind of he's a biker kind of yeah. look to him. Um, he didn't. He don't have the long hair no, no more. No, he doesn't. Though. No, he doesn't. Because, but he still looks like a guy that was a biker that I won't fuck with. Right. He still looks like <laughs> yeah. a badass. Yeah. yeah. But just to see him in a suit, though, mm-hmm. to see him in a suit, it's probably scary. and I'm looking at him, and I'm like, <laughs> it's like he's gonna murder me. You know, like yeah. you know, my friends are you know crying over our friend and everything. But I'm looking at the dude in the back. I'm like, that dude look like tarantula. <laughs> I'm gonna ask him. <laughs> so I went over there and I asked him, and, he, and he, yeah, he said it was him. So I was like, wow, dude, I remember (laughs) the biggest highlight of your career was when you got rock bottom by the rock on, it was was like Shotgun Saturday Night, 1997. Which is interesting, (laughs) which is interesting because Shotgun Saturday Night 
was like what 1 a.m. in in the area, and I, I'm 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 finding this out retroactively because I wasn't in the area because it was Shotgun Saturday Night and then PWX TV and then ECW, mm-hmm. yeah, like through like a Saturday night or something like that, right. So, Man, and good luck I, trying to find out what channel it was on. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea what channel PWS I wish, was on. I, I have really, no idea what channel ECW was on. I really wish I lived in Pittsburgh during that era to be able to watch all this stuff. Because, man. You just had to be up. You had yeah, to be up yeah. late at night just flicking the channels. Yeah. Like, this was back in the yeah. day when they had the black cable Dude, box with the yes. red numbers. So Dude, man. It was on, uh, back when we could steal cable. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. It was on uh, the CW. But what was the C? UPN. Yeah, yeah. And that's when yeah. ECW was on. It was like the okay. local, like what's now like my Pittsburgh or something like yeah. that. Yeah, I'm Pittsburgh sorry, guys. TV. We're getting real local, guys. I uh, know we apologize. Um, but we, just, we don't just apologize. Remin- no. Reminiscing. Uh, <laughs> Hashtag sorry, not sorry. Again, again, grew up in the sticks. Mm-hmm. They didn't. I think I got young, I got Youngstown TV, and we did not get any of this. I got my Saturday morning superstars, Saturday night's main event, whenever that was on. That was my. Wrestling. You didn't get no Ohio Valley. Nope. Nope. Not to my awareness. Never Jeez. found, never found it in the TV guide. At least no Ohio Valley the, wrestling. wrestling. Mm-hmm. And crazy. believe me, we had four channels. It would have been easy to find. Wow. <laughs> so, do you guys remember that old martial arts show that was uh, after uh, WWE Superstars? Uh-huh. Yes, it was on. It was uh-huh. on w, Fox. W A M C Masters. Or yeah, whatever. yeah. yeah Shannon Lee was the host, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, I remember that. I remember watching a little bit of that. It, I I was a big fan of that because I used to think that was real. <laughs> Yeah, same here. Like the dude who jumped up in the air and he did that chop with both his legs. And yeah, stuff. and he would beat up all the ninjas and like, yeah. if you'd win, you get a piece of the belt. So every week, if whoever wins it gets this thing, and then if they collect all the pieces, put the belt together, they are the master. Did they ever finish it? Yeah. So who won? Uh, it's on YouTube, man. <laughs> Shit. That means he is, that means he doesn't YouTube. know. Ah, I want to know. It's no. so great. Just give me my old American Gladiators with Larry Zonka. Yes. Come on. Not the one with Hulk Hogan. Ugh, that didn't work out too well. No. <laughs> Although it was, it was fun to talk to a couple of the gladiators on the show. Anything so. with Hulk Hogan? In, did you? You should have heard on Raw last night. It was just so funny because the Miz was talking about who he's going to have on Miz TV, and he said we're going to have legends. Hulk Hogan and the crowd was like, "Boo!" Like, who gives a damn? <laughs> and then they said the Nature Boy, Ric Flair, and everybody was like, "Woo!" Yeah. So I'm like, man, see, Hulk Hogan don't have that. No, no one cares about Hogan anymore. Nobody gives. A, nobody gives a damn the no more. The great thing is, like Ric Flair has probably done worse shit in his life than Hulk Hogan. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hogan made you know, like one or two mistakes well, his whole entire Rick life. Ric Flair yeah, has yeah, done yeah. a lot I of mean, bad I mean, shit. But I'm, every- I'm sure Hogan's made more mistakes. But like Hogan had one public fuck up that was a weird no, no. public fuck up. Yeah. Right. Which, oh, the one about the daughter and the, the, the daughter the and yeah. the dude yeah. and everything. Yeah. You yeah know. Cause, cause, cause him fucking Bubba, the love sponge's wife. I mean, that yeah, was, yeah, yeah. we, we forgave him he for got that. Weird. I saw and the porn put, so and he's like, go ahead, Hulk. <laughs> and, he put, and he put his I shit, saw the porn. and he put his shit in a reality show. So you know, I, I think, I he think he was tearing it up. Yeah, he was, <laughs> he was tearing it up. When it came crashing down, she was hurt inside. Right. But but like Ric Flair, like like that becomes a st- like a storied you know legendary thing was his you know misgivings you know yeah, right. over the years. I mean that we was his gimmick. That was Rick his gimmick because we knew that's what yeah. he did. He was a party guy. It just yeah. I, I think we're just reminded that Hulk Hogan is is a flawed human being, and we we are like, but you're the fucking American hero, dude. I don't give a shit about that NWA days. Like yeah. you gr- I grew up right. on the American hero, and I think that 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 killing of that ideal is what ki- like pisses us off the most yeah is, is hulkamania finally dead uh, it's been dead oh, for a couple years yeah now. and and it was him like that is it really is it, it literally him dead that killed now? it yeah i'm sorry no matter what when hulk hogan uh uh even today he's gonna walk into that ring next week he's gonna cut a hulk hogan pro he's gonna say let me tell you something brother and i want to get i want to get the wrestling shows because it it no matter what has happened, no matter what bad news, you know, once we find out like Hulk Hogan's a Nazi tomorrow, uh, you know, I, 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 him being Hulk Hogan is not Terry Barlea and it will still convert me into five year old me. Right. You know what I mean? As long as that music like, hits. I'm wearing an Ultimate Warrior T-shirt. Ultimate Warrior was a homophobic piece of shit. 
Yeah. Like, well, Jim Helwig was. And wrestled but, like shit. Yeah. But I still like Ultimate liked Warrior him. talking about, like, going down on the airplane with Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 6 and the shit that didn't make sense and being the Ultimate Warrior is the best fucking thing. Dude, I still remember the interview with Mean Gene Oracle and it was, um, it was a Barber Series showdown. <laughs> Would you call him Oracle? I was just with, with Gene Oracle, Oracle. yeah. Yeah, there was it was it was it was a Survivor Series showdown. <laughs> it was it was the lead into yeah, yeah. Survivor Series, and I remember his interview because you know I think I think his team was um, Terry Von Eric. I mean, not Carrie Von Eric, my fault. Carrie Von Eric. There might have been a Terry um, too. I don't know. And, like and, 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 the, and the Legion yeah. of Doom. Yeah, which I did, I didn't think about it at the time because I was young. But they were all warriors. You got mm-hmm. you know Ultimate Warrior, and then they was the Road Warriors, and mm-hmm. he was. Kerry Von Eric was the uh, the modern day warrior, mm-hmm. which I didn't pick up on. Which that. I never picked up on because again, all I had was WWE. Right. Because <laughs> I'm like, I don't get this. Right. I didn't get it until <laughs> him, I was in my twenties. But his interview, though, I will never forget it to this day. It still don't make any sense, but the way he said it, mm-hmm. he was like, Even you, Gene Orkland, cannot escape now. You must stay with us until D Day, this Thursday, Turkey Day. <laughs> Maybe then you will be released. But until then, I have programmed my subjects to remain on strong structured and unbalanced i'm like what the fuck did he just say <laughs> what the fuck is he talking happy about? thanksgiving i guess <laughs> <laughs> by the way throw back to that uh revenge is having their next show get yeah. this they're having their next show on thanksgiving eve okay in erie in Ooh. downtown erie Ooh. apparently and, and so i'm i'm like uh, i from here to then, I'm like, I can't wait to see the gobbly gooker because I that throws me back. Now I, I didn't mean, get the like like Survivor Series was a Thanksgiving tradition, right? And yeah, and he yeah. talks about that, but also like this cool thing again, a local vibe, an eerie PA, you know, uh, uh, in that same ballroom, I guess. As as McChesney was growing up, he talks about how, um, and you can see him light up when he talks about this. Like they had boxing mm-hmm. on New Year's Eve, or I'm sorry, Thanksgiving Eve every year mm-hmm. and they fill that place it was the biggest thing and they had even more people that, i mean they packed that stuff now with wrestling but they had set and everything like they packed that thing it was the craziest thing um in an eerie tradition and he wants to bring that back with wrestling why not like that is cool that is really cool plus it's like biggest of course biggest drinking night of the year you're right there in downtown erie and i think i think erie's uh, pastime from my experience and hanging with friends there is we end up at a club so i think that is the eerie pastime lately uh so like <laughs> it's gonna be bonkers if you're so, if you're doing that let me know i'm doing that well i'm, I'm gonna go film it I've, we're gonna film yeah okay, we, well, we, we film it for indie wrestling count yes. me in count, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I i'm i'm yeah. all in Dude, well yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm going i'll ride with you there you go there right you go. In, so yeah. the carpool now i'll follow you the, yeah. the carpool is now full uh <laughs> Because I'm sure we're dragging Dutters along with us too, or something. So, um, sorry, family. I'm going to watch wrestling on the uh, watch Eve. wrestling. Well, then they also have a half. They always have an after party, um, and they like, they're on the premises. Oh, I'm gonna be so hungover. For like, Thanksgiving. like they have a bar there on the premises in the building, and then like there are I don't know how many bars a block away. Yeah. Like you're you know, and there's a party bus that takes you to the rest of the bars. I know one individ- one wrestling individual uh, told us, or I heard about, um, um, did not make it to the party bus and had to walk back to the hotel from somewhere across town. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> In like winter or something. It was, wow, that sucks. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, I will gladly put the turkey costume on if they book me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go yeah wait wait you got wait do i have the hashtag book ronnie in here still let's see let's see that's uh then somebody named rob let's see show starting know. soon damn it I, get, I need to get that going there's jay there's oh well oh well it's fine. hashtag book ronnie as turkey turkey ronnie <laughs> Tur- turkey starks hey, let's start jet let's start another hashtag j for manager j for manager yes <laughs> j for manager i'll train him you'll train him yeah. Yeah, you've you just got to... All I got to do is take a couple of bumps. Yeah, yeah. You, you gotta, know, was, fuck with the referee. Yeah, it's, um, it's an easy gig, but don't man. give me no... A hey, for those who's watching, don't give me no sloppy-ass wrestlers. Now, you know what? Give me whoever you want. You got to work... I, man, you, you can't can start send, the You, you got to work your way up, you, man. You can send me shit, and I will make them shine nowhere. There you go. There it took you me go. a long time to just get like the position I'm in. What's that? Took me a long time to get the position I'm in. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, he's a ten year rookie over there. I know, and it only <laughs> took me ten seconds to win this. <laughs> Actually, three seconds. But uh, well, I had to. But wait, who's counting? I had to wait for you to lay down. Like, 
<laughs> Guys, what did you learn from wrestling this week? What have I learned? Well, or recently, since you haven't been on for a while. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I've learned that wrestling is on the rise. Um. I've learned that wrestling there's there's options now. There's so much to see. Some that we haven't even got a chance to talk about. We talked, you know, a little WWE, a little bit AEW, um, a lot of local. It's just so much to see and not enough time in the day. So that's what I picked up. And um, I will say that I wish that WWE Network did not, like, I'm, I'm just going to put this out there. I'm pissed that they took the network off of my um, tablet. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you're one of those. Yes, I'm one of them. Dude, I'm pissed they took the Chromecast off of it. But yeah, they you took realize, that off. You do realize they rebooted, like, the entire back end is different now. Like, okay. they're not with the same company that did their back end before. Wow. So that's one of the reasons the features are different like that. Because this wasn't I was, a, a I was all thinking because story. Amazon just didn't want to update or no, keep it, up no, with it was, or... It's a matter of, I believe, there was an article that I shared on Awesome Cast, and I think I shared in the Wrestling Mayhem Show group a couple weeks ago, talking about, real quick, because I think I might have mentioned this on the show before, um, BAM Entertainment, which was used the started as the MLB Network's like company that made that happen, and then they started, and I think they were owned by MLB, they did, you know, first HBO Now or Go or whatever, um, and and started getting like, hey, they're going to do the WWE one, they're going to do this, blah 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 blah. They got bought by Disney and are now doing Disney Plus, and not the core reason, but one of the reasons and thoughts of that is like, well, they're going to be less interested in helping other companies because they have their own company to put over, right? Mm -hmm. um, Edgewood Media, who is, uh, by the way, is also who is doing their podcast network that was announced recently. Okay. Has a digital media backend service. That's who did this one. If you're doing a new service, you have to go. It, it seems like, oh, God, why aren't they still supporting this? It's because they literally have to re create a new app for all those back platforms. And if you're like, hey, I need to make an app for something that hasn't been released in three, four years on a new app. Like, mm. do you expect Disney Plus to work on these old things? No. When we talk about, like, say, Xbox 360s, PlayStation 3s, things like that. Um, so, unfortunately to us, we got an app update and that's all we saw. Mm. So, I think that's what's confusing a lot of people. Yeah. You know, if they're, maybe Chromecast support will come. You know, um, maybe you say Amazons aren't, aren't aren't supported. Yeah, my fire was it? my fire tablets. Fire tablets, your fire yeah. tablets. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe the next Amazon thing that they announced. What am I tomorrow. supposed to watch while I'm at work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's unfortunate, but it's you very know, unfortunate. Yes, mm -hmm. and there's a wave, and unfortunately, wrestling fans don't always have a lot of money to have the newest of devices, and I think I think that's kind of fucked over a lot of fans, unfortunately, mm -hmm. and not been good for the goodwill. Of your company. So, but the number of pissed off people is probably a vocal minority compared to how many millions of dollars they're making. So, there's that. And this is my TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Roddy, what'd you learn in wrestling this week? It's not what I've learned in wrestling, it's what I learned in something else. And I'm bringing this up. Uh oh. Uh, uh oh. So, apparently, uh, the Reed Area 51 thing didn't go as planned with a lot of people. Not too many people showed up. What? Yeah. Okay. I, I was watching videos on YouTube, and I wanted to talk about this for days because it was just ridiculous. Uh, there was more people at Mothman Festival than there was oh, at... Uh, By the way, he's sporting a Mothman I, shirt um, right over there. I yeah, love the Batman style. shirt's amazing. But uh, there was more people there than there was at the Raid Area 51. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was pretty people weird. had to make a choice, Mothman or Area 51. Uh, and this is where everybody went. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but I was watching all the videos, and it was just all the, the weird people showed up. But yeah, there was, yeah. There's probably like 200 people there. Okay. With all like the thousands and thousands of people that said they were going to go. Yeah. yeah, what happened to all them celebrities that said they were going? Yeah, but it's going to be a yearly thing now. Oh, jeez. Really? Yeah. We're going to try it again. Uh, but it's just going to be a festival. Yeah. So I'm going to go defend that next year at Area 51. <laughs> <laughs> if you get it back from if jail. i get it back yeah yeah, yeah. oh jeez. um i learned this week um don't do a strip tease in the middle of a wrestling match <laughs> let's go well, one it lasts too long it's weird that there's no music and you're just gonna get kicked in the face so 
Uh, something I learned from Revenge Pro this past weekend. Guys, thank you so I much. I wish I was there because I'm like, there, what? There's a GIF. There's a GIF that we already shared today because I think the show is still rendering and it should be up tomorrow. Is that what it's called? I thought it was called a GIF. GIF? It's a GIF. I go GIF. I don't care. Okay. I'm If that's politically incorrect. <laughs> okay. I'm going with GIF. I like the hard G. Sorg, GIF, GIF from me to you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Hard, you got to get the hard G. Yeah, all about you the hard G. You got to get that Pornhub achievement with that hard G. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, Jay Cooper, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. What's coming pleasure. up? Anything you want to plug? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have the, um, the, the Giggles and Grub Club of Jan and Joy Productions, um, two fellow um, female comedians of mine, um, Judge Janelle and Robert of Joy. They have their own comedy club in Swissville, right yeah. above the T's um, restaurant and lounge in Swissville. So it's called the Giggles and Grub Club. And um, on this Friday, the 27th, they're doing the Rasta Reggae Comedy Experience. So, yeah. It's going to be nice. Um, it, it's a reggae theme, so you know I'm going to be wearing the colors and everything. Nice. And doing the fake accent and all that nice. stuff. Nice. Um, I'm working on trying to come up with a PG-13 set because they don't allow rated R in there, and I'm a rated R comic. Uh-oh. Yeah. That's why we have you on our show. Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's Friday at um, 8.30. So if y'all are in the area, come on down. It's going to be a lot of good, funny comedy and stuff it's a it's a great experience they always have good shows and then um saturday september 28th i'm doing a show with the sahara temple in braddock um along with um sean parker and mike zydell and levi and a couple other good local comedians so yeah that's wait what there's I one named sean parker yep sean parker sean the real parker aka the hoods comedian that's what he calls himself okay yeah I know Sean yeah. Parker from the Facebook movie. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, we, I, I literally edited a podcast this week that talked about Sean Parker. So oh, it, that okay. was on top of my head. I saw and, the yeah. wheels turning. Yeah, the yeah. I'm just like, Sean, wait, Sean Park? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Because oh, I, I didn't even think about it. Damn, I'm going to miss AEW because I have a show next Tuesday, Son October 2nd. Bitch. I know, no, I'm Wednesday. mad. It's I didn't Wednesday. think about that. Wednesday, October 2nd, right? Right. It's Wednesday, yeah, October yeah. 2nd. Yeah, I just forgot. I'm, I'm booked on that show. I almost said I, 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 But no, it's a, it's a good show, though. It's, it's, um, You'll it's, catch it on the DVR. It's, 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 um, it's, it's called Make Sure You Laugh. It's comedy for a cause. It's a, it's a comedy benefit awesome. show awesome. at the Spirit Lodge in Morrisville. So. Which is also where KSWA is. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So, so that's, all, that's all I got going on. And then, of course, check me out. Twitter, Instagram, um, Coop Troop Comedy. And you know Facebook, Jay Cooper, because I got I'm on that Pittsburgh comedy um, competition at the Improv again. So this will be my sixth time. Help me get to the finals. Nice. All right. So that's it. I'm done plugging. <laughs> Where you defend your championship? I Every, I could everywhere and anywhere. Well, I'll come and <laughs> I'll come and beat you at your own. Uh... Your own comedy show. As long as you vote for me, I don't give a damn what you do. Yeah. <laughs> there you, go. you got my vote. <laughs> you get my vote, and then you can get the title. Hey, How about works, that? It works for Matt Light. <laughs> <laughs> Why not, right? Yeah. Exactly. Ronnie Starks, you're doing stuff? Uh, Yeah, this Sunday at the Stronghold for mm-hmm. Uprise. It's in Lamont Furnace, PA. Yes, I'm going to be managing the great Alexander against uh, Peyton Graham. So that is the great Alexander's first match at Uprise. And it is my first appearance in Uprise. So uh, hopefully there's a victory there. Awesome. He better win. Hopefully. He better win. What do you mean hopefully? Uh, he's, what kind he's of manager new, are you? No, he's new. You know, he's got to get his Yeah, this is like his, his second bearings. match or something, yeah. like officially. Like he was in a battle royal, well, but we don't count that. Yeah, it took him a you know? Are you like, yeah. well, uh, can you even say it? Are you a heel? Oh, I'm a heel. No, manager? I am a heel. Oh, you are a heel manager? Yeah, I can't. Well, then your dudes should win. No, huh. the answer is he does what it takes. I this is what I'm it. saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what's, what's, what, what did Bobby Heenan always used to say? Win if you can, lose if you must, yeah. but always what? Always cheat. Exactly. Always cheat. That's right. Exactly. And of course, a lot of things going on here in the Sorgatron Media Central. Go check out all the great shows at SorgatronMedia.com, including our friends at Thrifty Podcast, uh, Bardic Mystery Tours, if you like Dungeons & Dragons podcasts, uh, our friends at Bold Sports Pittsburgh, 
old Pittsburgh sports. I always say that the wrong way. Uh, and, of course, uh, <laughs> Pittsburgh Current Podcast as well. They like to cover wrestling from time to time. Please go check them out, too. Uh, thank you, everybody. And also, Wrestling Mayhem Show, We there's a, a 50-50 chance there may be a surprise Indie Mayhem Show tomorrow night. I was hoping to get a confirmation on that. Or we, uh, we'll we we'll get back to that soon, I swear. Sorry, I've been we haven't done it too much. With that show lately, but it's been very, very busy. And uh, we will see you see the Sorgatron, I'm sorry, the Sidekick Media crew at Conquest Wrestling down in Charleston, West Virginia this Friday. Uh, say hi to us. We will also be at Uprise Sunday as well as Saturday. Uh, our friends uh, RWA at Fall Free For All and the Pros of Wrestling show Havoc in the Heights in Irwin, PA. So if you see any of the crew, whether myself or uh, our, uh, our producer Missy, or uh, cameraman Rob, or whoever, I can't remember who we got booked this weekend, uh, please say hi to us wherever you do. I know Joe Dabrowski will be along the further ride in Charleston, West Virginia, too, because he just confirmed our carpool. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much, everybody out there. Uh, Check out Gold. We are going to be bringing up the blindfold match from the recent 2PW show for these guys to watch. Yeah, I'm sticking around for that one. You guys in the Pocky (laughs) Club will be checking that out on on Mayhem After Dark. Thank you so much, guys. Mayhem. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the perfect time. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.